Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we love talking about creativity and artwork. We're here with Natalie Cooper. She is a professional pop artist. Her company is Custom Art by Nat Coop. So Nat, how are you doing? Oh my gosh, hello. Thank you for the fabulous introduction. I'm doing so good today. I'm just so excited that, you know, you wanted me to be a part of your awesome show and everything that you're doing for City of Memphis and beyond. So I'm, I'm thrilled. Absolutely. So you are a creative. We'll talk about that space. We'll talk about entrepreneurialism. We'll talk about a lot of fun, different topics, but let's start with a little bit of your backstory. Give us how you got into art. So talk about art in terms of stepping in as a professional venture. When did, when did you become an artist? Talk about art. Oh my gosh. Well, so the word artist in general for me has always existed. If you ask my parents, I was coloring on things that I could find as young as, you know, one or two, but for it being a venture for my life, it truly went from when I was at University of Memphis, I was studying public relations and social media marketing, and I really had no intentions of being a full-time professional artist because, you know, people put such an interesting stigma on like, you are going to be a starving artist if you want to like be in the creative field. And I always thought that, you know, for me personally, I love marketing. I love business. I love learning about like the behind the scenes things. So I felt like, you know, if I ever wanted to do it, it would kind of work out. But so I was in a sorority at, at Memphis. I was a Kappa Delta. And so we would have these things where we needed to paint like event banners and things for our like our big and littles in our sorority whatever and people kept asking me to paint those and so I would you know be painting like little signs and fun things and just it was interesting because I was like oh people are paying me for this cute stuff that like I'm having fun doing and then in 2017 I had a girl ask me hey my mom's birthday's coming up would you mind trying to paint her dog and so I had never in my life painted a dog until 2017. And as soon as I found my old art Instagram from high school, posted it on there, everything kind of just took off on its own, which is, it was so organic. It, it, it still feels weird to me today that it's like five years later and I'm still doing this. Anyone who follows you online will see a, a broad array of colorful dogs and, and, For sure. and, and cityscapes and college like all sorts of collages and so how do you describe your artwork well when people ask me i always like to be i like to give a little preface of like okay be ready the color is coming through because <laughs> definitely i feel very very drawn to just things that actually make you feel a lot of a lot of emotions and like vibrancy with color like for me personally i i mean i'm wearing all black i'm like a, the weird person that like is wearing all black but i love and, and I'm attracted to color in general. So when people ask me what I do, I usually like to say I am a fine artist, but in not in the sense of like galleries, I would say that I'm almost more of a retail artist because I really love to be able to connect with business owners and local places and like actually have my stuff a part of like the whole scene of like gifts and things like that. Um, but the, the pets are just the original OG thing that I care about so deeply because I've always had animals in my life and it just is so easy to relate to people who love animals so deeply so that's really where it kind of all came from and like I had this one specific scenario where I had a really lovely client who's come back to me a lot of times that she said my since my parents dog passed away it was so hard for us to look at photos of that of our pet but when you painted her she is full of color and full of life and makes me actually happy when I look at the canvas versus like just a photo of her where it's like a memory that makes me really sad. So I feel like that's such an honor that I'm able to create something that makes people feel so happy and alive with something that, you know, is so sad. Do you feel a lot of pressure when someone gives you their, their loved one uh, as a pet and gives you a picture and then, you know, you're, you're tasked with creating this beautiful, vibrant picture of their animal that's going to be the keepsake, their, their pet, their loved one. H how do you kind of feel that in terms of creating this piece? That is such an interesting question because I, I do sometimes when it, when it, because on my, my, I always have like a pet portrait order form on my website that people fill out. And I have one section where it says, can you tell me a little bit more about your pet or why you're commissioning me, things like that. And it does get a little bit stressful sometimes when it's like, this was our 
entire, this dog was our entire life. And I want to make sure that like everything is this and this and this. And truly I love detail and I love being given instruction because then it kind of gives me like a place where I know this is something so important and I'm going to be the person that's going to make it happen. So I almost kind of like the pressure sometimes because in a way I'm like, okay, this is a challenge. Like this is a challenge that I want to accomplish for this person. And typically it's always worked out, which has been really lovely. So maybe, you know, you'll get back to me one day and then someone will be like, wow, I really hated that painting. And then I'll be like, oh, okay. Well, the confidence just went down, but no, honestly, other than that, I really do feel like it, I'm more than like nervous about it. I'm much more just like honored that this is something that I get to do for someone. So the pressure is, it's like good pressure, you know? Yeah. It brings out your best. Yeah. For sure. So what about the kind of the college collages, the cityscapes? Talk about those and where you draw your inspiration. Yeah, for sure. So I think that it's been, so I grew up in Germantown and then I went to University of Memphis, like I'd already said. And I was very much that person where I was like, okay, well, when I graduate, I'm going to move on. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to do other things and just kind of like explore the world. And it was so because my art business started while I was in college, like finishing up and then went just com continued on. I really think that I got to appreciate Memphis for all that it is and for all that the creative community here and even not creative community, just people who like art have really been able to, they've just given back to me in a way that I never thought that I would experience. So for me, doing the collages is almost kind of like my love letter to Memphis like I love doing things where even if in the back of oh my goodness this way um <laughs> so this is actually going to be it hasn't been even posted on my page yet but Jimmy Stovall the CEO of Corky's actually had commissioned me to do a huge custom collage for his restaurant in East Memphis and it's like it's things like those scenarios where I'm like so honored that someone that is such a you know, a pillar in the Memphis community would want me to create something for them so being here and like being a part of what makes Memphis like great and doing things that give back to the community is like is is so important to me and the collegiate stuff really came out because I have had so many friends from high school and college that have gone to other places or have family members that once I started doing University of Memphis art it just kind of became well can you do my school and so it was like okay then I did University of Tennessee I did Ole Miss Mississippi State and I just released Auburn so for me, I just think it's really fun because people get so excited about college and like football and all that stuff. So it's almost like it, it invigorates me to like keep creating these things that people just get really excited about. So aside from the piece behind you tied to Quirky's, what's been just a fun moment where it's like, oh, wow, this really is real. And, you know, like either a surreal yeah. moment or something where it's like, wow, this is really happening. And this is a career. I get to see my artwork in all these amazing places or someone famous has reached out. So what's been one of those kind of pinch yourself moments? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, it, there's been a lot of pinch myself moments where I, even the first time that I shipped a painting to Canada because they found me on Instagram, I was like, wow, okay, we're going, we're branching out from the, even the United States. So that was a big deal. But I would say that something that really affirmed my career that this is going to be a career was when I first had a shop purchase my prints. And when it put, when I fully started to go into like the retail space beyond just like, because communication for me is so important. I love communicating with my clients and learning more about, you know, what they want from me and what I can create for them. But I think that, so I arrow creative, which like a lot of people have heard of, they, um, were the first people to actually want my Memphis prints in store. So that was when it was like, oh my gosh, this is such a big deal. And then after that, I'm now in um, Oxbow, which was formerly Dixie Pickers and more than words in Germantown. And I just now got to uh, Mississippi and I'm in a place called Ultimate Gifts. So it's like, we're, once I started getting a lot of stores, wanted to carry my stuff and actually like be like, this is someone we want to be a part of our like business, our brand, our company, that was a really pinch myself moment where when I go in those stores and see my stuff displayed, it just is so, it just feels so, it makes you feel so special, you know, that like someone wants to actually have your art displayed and it's, I just get people's messages all the time to say, I received your gift for Christmas and it was like, it meant so much to me and I'm so glad I found you on Instagram so I can connect with you. Like that, that's really important to me. 
Give us a little bit of the power of your background going through from an education standpoint, marketing, communications, digital marketing. How has that parlayed and helped you grow your business? Absolutely. So that's why I kind of had prefaced in saying I never ex- I- expected this to be a career because I was pretty certain that I was going to go straight into a public relations firm or work for like a creative marketing company, something like that, because I I found such a deep passion in that when I was in school. And um, I actually did my internship for my social media marketing minor at More Than Words um, boutique in Germantown, which is so cool to like now have my art there when I like was such a part of the things they were doing. Um, But I would say that because I felt so naturally inclined to marketing and social media, it really felt almost second nature to be posting things and connecting with people online and then have them in turn give so much back to me. And obviously like, I'm not, I'm not all about like having followers, like all that kind of stuff. Like I, I appreciate the community that I have and that like it continues building on its own organically, but I've, I actually still do social media audits to this day where like people will want to, you know, expand their business, find their audience, grow. And I still have that expertise that I'm willing and happy to give, especially to businesses like small businesses like me that I've been able to find, you know, have those people that want to find me actually be able to find me on Instagram because you have to give them the opportunity with, you know, all the type of marketing things that every business may or may not know how to do. Um, So I think that I'm almost like my sister has described me at one point as a art influencer, which I think is really funny because like, for me, I'm not about the game. Like I'm not doing brand deals, you know, I'm not doing all that stuff, but I love like kind of just having like my personality on my page. Like that's very, that's something that I think is really fun about social media and business as one thing. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs and creatives who are looking to leverage social media and marketing to build their brand and their business? If it's specifically for someone who wants to build their business on Instagram or social media, whatever platform they like to use, I think that what I said before, not focusing on those numbers, I think is really important because when you start to really just obsess over, I don't have this many followers, so I can't do this. No one cares about what I'm doing because I don't have these things. I don't have this proof on my page or whatever. You have to think about the fact that you already have like a thousand, 2000, whatever people that are actually seeing and appreciating what you're doing, because those people are going to be the ones that will maybe stick around to your entire career and watch you grow. And so focusing in on the people that are actually already giving you that love, that attention, that like boost in confidence, those are the ones that matter. So find your niche, find your brand, definitely work on having some consistency where you can. Introducing new stuff is awesome, but consistency is super key on social media, Instagram, especially TikTok, all of it. But I think that we need to stop acting like having this giant following, especially for what I do is the most important thing. Cause it's just really not. And it also adds a lot of stress to your life that you really just really don't need to have appreciate the people you have to this day. I have people that still message me and say, I remember your art from 2017 and watching it to today. And they, they tell me they're proud of me. Like, that is so sweet. I feel like I have like another group of like, I have like my parents that are like just messaging me on Instagram and there's like, it's just a name, but it means so much. And I think people need to remember that but these are real people. Like these are real, these are going to be your future clients. These are going to be your word of mouth people, everything. So it's, it's, it's nice to not uh, make it all about the numbers, you know? Talk about balancing the creativity with the business. In many cases you hear that artists, you know, all of a sudden they're, they're good on one side, the creative side, but then the business over here starts to suffer. And so how do you balance the business and all the accounting and operations and making sure that the business is running smoothly with the the creative side so how do you balance those two for sure i and i I do think that it's kind of nice to it's i was always almost more business focused immediately and i just had the artistic drive in general so i love talking to artists who are maybe struggling with that in general where i say that especially as like a woman like becoming financially literate was really really important to me and actually being able to give that advice to other women who are maybe like, I love what I do and I want to learn how to make this my life, but I just don't even know where to start. Because even for me, college really did a lot for me, but it did not teach me how to do my taxes. It didn't teach me how to do QuickBooks. It didn't teach me how to set up meetings with a CPA and be able to get deductions and even to have an LLC. Like all of these things, I really had to 
learn on my own and also learn by asking other people when I was like a lot younger. And I think that asking questions is such a lovely thing to do. So when it comes to keeping the business side alive while keeping your creative flame lit, I think that making sure that you see it as like, see it as a, a learning opportunity. See it as you can make yourself financially literate, use weekends, use whatever, you know, that grind culture, whatever, use it to your advantage. But then also make sure that you set aside time to talk to other artists, go to events where people are creating. Don't make it so much in your head where you're like, I need to get this and this and this done because if I don't, I'm a failure. If you go and collaborate and talk to other people who are in the same field as you, you are going to have that creative vision reinvigorated without even realizing. I think community within artists is so important because a lot of times, especially with social media, we put ourselves in our studio and we just sit here and work and work and work and we don't remember that we have this huge amount of people that want to be part of it. So I think that's really important, keeping that community alive and also becoming as financially literate as you can and you'll it'll it'll balance out. I hope that every artist finds that because financial literacy, man, it takes a lot, but it is you feel so empowered once you really kind of learn about these things. Yeah, very well said. Wrap up with where we can go to find your artwork. I know that you're at some festivals coming up. And so talk about where we can go, including your website, where you mentioned we can do the custom orders. So talk about where we can find you and connect in with you. Absolutely. So obviously my, my business name is Custom Art by Nat Coop. I like to shorten Natalie Cooper's a really common name. So we just shorten that up real quick. So if you type in Nat Coop, you can usually find me. Um, but so my website is customartbynatcoop.com. It's the same with all my social media, Instagram, Facebook. And if you want to do your shopping online, my store is always open with lots of new products all the time. The collegiate collages graduation season is coming up. So it's been really fun to have everybody really excited about giving their college freshmen or college graduates, you know, gifts of their school. And you can also go to all those stores that I said before and a new store in uh, South Main Street, which is called Feel in Memphis. They're about to have some of my prints there. Um, but so a show I have coming up is the Carnival Fair on the Square. It's a two-day event, and it's going to be May 7th and 8th. So I really hope that people stop by. It's obviously not going to be me. It's, it's a huge, huge festival, super fun. You can bring dogs. It's great. So I hope that people will come stop by and say hello to me. There's going to be lots of new products, and it's going to be really fun. Well, I absolutely love it. And congratulations on all the success. We'll definitely have to have you keep coming back to uh, talk about even greater things ahead. But yes. thank you for all you do and for coming on the show, Natalie. Thank you so much. I had a great time and I, I appreciate all of the, uh, the insightful questions.